just starting to pop here in New Jersey. These are the flowers of spice bush. These are an incredible medicinal plant. The twigs also have um, medicinal properties within them and are like toothpaste. So you can eat the flowers, but it's kind of unsustainable to harvest. There's also a young one. There will be a lot more around. You can see there's a spice bush from far away. So this basically has like antlers. What's up, dude? Hope you're well, man. Hope the podcast is doing really well. And uh, yeah, this is a great medicinal herb. So it's carminative. It's really uh, heating for the system. So it's really good in the fall when you get cold joints and everything. But as I mentioned, it gets really big. And uh, you can actually see it's like antler, almost all those holes. And those are all uh, lenticels, breathing holes on the spice bush. So Lindera is the genus and they're pretty common all throughout the northeast and they make berries and the berries are really awesome here's a taller one so they're just starting to flower due for a visit I'm totally up for it dude I'd love to come I haven't been to Brooklyn it's been nice I was in California for about five months it was definitely a little nicer uh, than being in Brooklyn uh, although I was in LA which is pretty intense but everywhere has its uh, beautiful pros and cons, you know. So yeah, that's uh, another look at spice bush. So, you know, for a breath mint or something, you eat a couple of those flowers. Super tasty. Very uh, warming. Harvest with care and love. Mmm. See if we can get a close-up of the flowers. That's yeah, pretty good. Flowers are awesome. Nature is origami. You can see there sepals on the outside and petals, next level, and then stamens and pistils. So uh, I memorize that by going SPSP SP for like a week straight. Just every once in a while reminding myself, okay, SPSP. SP. On the outside is the sepals, on the next level is petals, then stamens, and then pistils. So each uh, flower has a different count of that. And of course Linnaeus went around counting all those and that's how they classified uh, species botanically. But then they actually realized over time that that's how they uh, found history. That's the history of plants. Nice. Nice. Ground score of garbage. So yeah, that's how uh, basically they started classifying plants in age because uh, you know, common plants together and their different families end up being uh, uh, common ancestors. So all the origins of plants is there. So you have like a, these are some kind of sedge. Looks like, oh, maybe not. So there's all grasses, alliums, you know, all kinds of stuff to watch out for. But these have flat leaves. So they're pretty weird. They might be daylilies as well. They're super young, so just checking it out. See these. So basically I'm just scanning the area and catching up to New Jersey and really looking at what's around and what stage everything's in so that when I get up to Ananda, I'm gonna know what's going on. Headed to Ananda Ashram this weekend. So this is where the you can see thorns. Try to get some good light. Japanese barberry. And this is uh, a very common plant, it's said to be invasive from Japan. And they actually brought it here for erosion control. And then they realized that it was uh, spreading. So then they blamed the plant instead of their own poor ecological skills. So it's hard to get close ups, but this uh, is a little yellow. Right, the inner bark is yellow, and that's actually a, a, kind of like a benzene derivative, which we know uh, is used in the medical system for antiseptic properties. This one also has antiseptic properties. Uh, it's actually a berberine, that's the chemical. And the roots are loaded, and the whole plant is loaded. So literally, there are invasive plant people who are getting rid of that. And they literally could be putting the, it in their Vitamix with alcohol and making tincture for the whole village. So it's a, you know, antibacterial, antiviral herb and uh, nobody knows what to do with it. Very bitter, you know, and the bitters in the medicine that's liver stimulating. 
all that good stuff. Smilax, good old friend. Smilax with the thorns. And my close-ups are not the greatest. Maybe my lens is dirty. So you can see some Smilax. It's a very common plant. Some That's a genus. Smilax genus. So Smilax regeli, regelii, however you want to pronounce it, is actually where you get sarsaparilla. So there's a bunch of different Smilax genus. And they all have their different properties. You can see the thorns, also called cat briar. But one of the best parts of this plant is when they're, uh, the new tips are there. You just pinch it back until it snaps off in your hand. It's like the most delicious, uh, unique asparagus ever to be had. What's this one? Five points. Either who gets it. I don't know, there's two people. It didn't say the other person who entered the room, but it did say Everyday Detox. Water, something there was not a lot of in California, that's for damn sure. So here this indicates that it's been raining, and therefore I'm on the lookout, you know, for morels, for example. So morels are going to be around. That's the water. Morels kind of start hitting uh, in April, so, you know, I'm just starting to scan the area. Morel, basically, morel hunting is more about standing still, kind of rock hopping. So you just rock hop, and you stand on this rock, and you basically just stare slowly, and you just start looking at the patterns. And the problem with morels is they basically look like piles of leaves, so you really have to kind of train yourself to start uh, developing pattern recognition with looking for morels. And it's really, you know, any deciduous forest with tulip poplars, which this happens to have tulip poplars everywhere, could totally uh, yield morels. But the problem is, uh, most people don't have the patience. It's not like walking in the woods. It's like staring at the ground for hours to find a new morel spot. So in about 12, 14 years of looking for mushrooms, I've found morels in three spots in New Jersey. Maybe that's because they're not super common, or maybe because somebody knows the super secret. You know, they're not super common around here. That's my assessment. So, this is another wild edible, which are actually young wild violets, which are one of the best edible greens. This is very small, so I wouldn't harvest a lot. But I'm gonna eat one, because it's also part of how I tune into the environment. As I stay eating just small amounts of wild foods, and it taps, in the end to the ecosystem and the message of the ecosystem and so of course funny look this is two plants there are different plants if you look really closely this one has a sheath that means it's a wild onion right it's also hollow and it will smell like an onion um, and tastes like an onion and so those are wild onions coming up so they're going to be all over the place of course, if you pull that up, there's a bulb, but generally you don't even need to. You can just pull that, use that as scallions. Uh, you can totally use onion grass or wild onions. Any alliums in ferments, really great to ferment with. And next to it are very young spring beauties coming in, which are uh, Claytonia genius. Genius. Claytonia genus. The genius of geniuses. And uh, those actually were really w wonderful to eat on the west coast and they're known as miner's lettuce so a really famous cool awesome wild edible which actually uh, restaurants are starting to sell on the east coast which is just like a common weed for people in California so you know the grass is always greener on the other side okay, there we go there's a little look at the flowers coming in on the spring beauties so another one of my favorite spring edible greens those are native so they shouldn't be harvesting too much of a, a a lot but you know it's a whole thing with ethics and where your food comes from and how much to pick and it takes years and years and years watching places so that is actually uh, not edible I forget what this plant is but you know it's hard to memorize plants that you know you don't uh, get to consume because they're just a name I remember all the ones that I consume, but for the ones that are not edible or poisonous, you know, there's not all the hard drive space in the world. So 
So thank you all for uh, tuning in and sending you lots of plant blessings and sunlight power. And uh, check out your local park and try to get a field guide and look around and see what you can find. There's food and medicine everywhere. Take care.